sonrasında e, PTF dediğimiz, piyasa takas fiyatı dediğimiz güvenilir bir referans fiyatının oluşumu EPH'in en önemli görevleri arasında. E, bugün tarih itibariyle EPH'de şu anda 1114 katılımcı işlem yapmakta. E, EPH portföyünde rüzgar santrali olan e, 149 tane de katılımcımız bulunmakta. E, bizde sadece lisanslı katılımcılar işlem yapıyor. Lisanssız katılımcılar e, EPH'e kayıtlı değil, online işlemleri k tarafından yürütülmekte. Şimdi konumuz rüzgar üretimi olunca e, 2018'deki toplam üretimin e, içindeki rüzgar... And when we look at the highest production rate, it's the uh, September uh, of uh, it's the September of 26. And when we look at the daily uh, lowest and highest rates, we can see that the highest uh, wind production is on the 26th of September. But we have various programs related to statistics. Uh, but I think it's important for the participants. Well, if you're on the second phase of our uh, project, we can only see the data of uh, 48 hours. But, and then maybe in the next uh, months, next periods, we will get to the data of 72 uh, hours. But when we look at the day ahead market statistics, in 2018, we had a high uh, Actually, um, the price uh, of the uh, high price of the market. Now you can see the lowest and highest rates. In 2018, you can see December, uh, it's the same when compared to the last year. But after April, we see a high rate. And when you look uh, at the mean uh, average, it's 60, uh, 63, but now it's uh, actually over uh, 300. Well, the day ahead market is important for the wind energy. But when we look at the uh, year uh, uh, plans, they are like normal users. And when we look at the 2016, we see that the uh, volumes are were very low, but then it was increased. When we look at the 2017 and 2018, and compared to 2016, we see uh, actually very high rates. But when we look at the power plants, they behave like other uh, participants just to minimize it. They are trying to use the day ahead market more effectively and more actively. In, and sometimes in predictions, we have some false uh, and positive imbalances. When we look at the day ahead market, in, uh, they minimize uh, these uh, imbalances in the market. Well, actually, now it's one hour. Uh, after one hour of a physical uh, shipment, you can uh, do your uh, exchanges. Well, we have uh, different aspects. And we have the SGs uh, related uh, to the day at the market, and they minimize the imbalances in the market too. Well, we have some uh, changing uh, legislation relating to market, and also they affect the wind energy market. Well, this is a f uh, from uh, renewable. 
any without uh, energy changes. And this application affects the wind energy. It actually causes burden to uh, wind power plants. When we look at the uh, December and uh, September period, Actually, more than 40% uh, of uh, the of this uh, uh, production uh, rate, we see the importance of the production of it. And lastly, to wrap up, well, the energy storage is important. We will be talking about uh, it in session. Uh, well, this is included in the uh, in various legislations. I think for the wind uh, energy uh, sector, it's important. Well, I would like to conclude my uh, speech here, then leave the uh, floor to the panelists. Well, let's start with Urai. Could you please introduce yourself at first, and then uh, could you please talk about your plants? Uh, what is your production process? Thank you. Well, hello, I'm Urai Altailen. Since 2014, I I will. I used to deal with the natural gas, uh, and uh, since 2018, I am a sales and trade manager in Borsan ENBW Energy. Well, I will be talking about uh, the production forecasting and risk analysis. Well, for the investor, the this subject, uh, especially for a sales and trade managers, how important is it? I will be talking about it. And then, uh, at the second step, I will be talking about the changes in legislation. How uh, does it affect uh, the uh, trading par partners related to the wind uh, power plants? Well, before the uh, investment period, we have some uh, risk analysis. Before the investing process, uh, for a one-year period, we uh, collect data and then we decide on uh, that uh, process. I think uh, if the data is healthy and clear, then uh, you can decide uh, very properly and suitable, then you can can actually uh, uh, go for auctions. But we have two important uh, steps. Well, the price. Uh, uh, well, the prices uh, and the uh, wind forecasting is important. Well, how? Uh, well, the market. Well, we have a day ahead uh, market, uh, an intraday market, you know, and they are very uh, important. But then we have a 7,000 megawatt. If you have a 7,000 megawatt and if your forecasting is not clear, the, PT, uh, the PTF uh, price might be misleading. Well, in the intraday market, you do the forecasting pri uh, prior of uh, 36 hours. And when you have a 36 hours of forecasting, as Fatih mentioned, it can be a, a reduction of uh, an hour. If you do your forecasting well, I think uh, the wind uh, forecasting is really essential to be active in that market. Well, this third part is the system manager. Well, before uh, 36 hours, you do your forecasting. But on the real time, as you all know, we have a, a balancing uh, plans. And the uh, system 
system manager for keeping the sustainability of that system at the real time sends the instructions. So this is 7,000 megawatts. Uh, and in the morning session, when we add the auctions, it can be up to 10,000 megawatts. It has the potential. And for the system manager, it has a burden. So for uh, the system manager, if you are doing the forecasting well, then it will lessen the burden of the system manager on the real time. It will give the clear load forecasting so we can be close to the market price as well. For the, uh, but we are an investment uh, company. And after the investment period, according to the power market legislation, we have to uh, uh, apply our rules to that legislation. Well, as I mentioned before, the wind plants can uh, actually forecast 38 uh, 36 hours prior, but it's important to forecast 100% uh, clearly. So we have to look for the formulation of the legislation. Well, the legislation says that if there is a positive imbalance for uh, tomorrow, if you have forecasted uh, 10,000, but on the real time, if you have 20 megawatts of product, Action, then I will uh, give the um, minimum price. Uh, this is the formulation. The, this uh, decreases it by 3%. Well, the second part is if there is a negative imbalance, what is negative imbalance? Your forecast is 20,000, uh, but on the real time you produce 10,000. At that case, to minimize uh, this imbalances, we have an intraday market. In the intraday market, if you have uh, these implications, actually you can uh, decrease this rate. When you look at the formulation, the most important thing is to make our wind forecasting more clearly, as clear as possible. When we look at the formulation, the second phase is when we are doing the imbalance uh, prices, uh, when we uh, look at the PTF levels, we should have a, a clear view of that, and then we can be active in this uh, process. Well, as a wind power uh, plant, we naturally have imbalances. And sometimes it, there might be a negative effect. If there are challenges in the legislation, we should be cautious as the product, uh, as the, in the production part uh, of the wind power plants. And we need to be active in the intraday market. Now we have some uh, very good improvements today. We can work with two or three firms, then we can have better and analysis, and then we can minimize the imbalances in the intraday market. Well, thank you, Urai. Well, you are a, a sales and trade manager. It, this was a good evaluation. Well, maybe on the second phase, uh, we can be talking about uh, the uh, G factors indexes. Well, thank you. Well, uh, the next speaker is Urjan Yoldash. Well, I'm Urjan Yoldash. I'm a, a director of regulatory affairs. Well, for uh, 
12 years, I have been active uh, in the Turkish Energy Committee. And since 2012, I have been in the private sector. Now I am in uh, Limak Energy, and I'm a director of regulatory affairs. Well, Uri uh, had a good evaluation in terms of uh, production. And I will be talking about uh, Uluda, it's one of the most important distribution parts in uh, Turkey. For example, the unlicensed productions effect in Turkey. But for the renewable energy policy, in each step, we need to support the renewable energy sources. Well, it's a, a natural source, it's a natural treasure for us. But wind energy is uh, a different uh, part of this process. It's a more rebellious one. We need to have a good evaluation. We need to have clear forecasting in the wind energy. Apart from destructive effects, we need to uh, actually focus on the improvements. Well, Uluda is a very feasible place in terms of wind energy. Uh, from to Chanakkale uh, and Yalova, we have uh, energy distributions. We have um, 12 million megawatt hour uh, in annually. And in our area, we have 205 unlicensed plants. And 35 of them is a wind power plant. And they have 30 megawatts of power. Our installed power is 88,000 uh, megawatts. Watts. The share of it is 8% in the uh, morning session it was mentioned. Well, in our area, in the production area, the unlicensed consumption is uh, up to 10% actually. When we look at the uh, imbalance calculations, well, we don't have our uh, wind power plant, but when we look at the unlicensed wind power plants, uh, actually we are affected uh, from them directly. As uh, investors, actually, we have uh, wind forecastings and in the uh, day ahead head market and intraday market, we look at the statistics. If there is imbalance, we need to change our positions. Well, in the systems, we have bilateral uh, effects of wind power plants. The first of them on the trade side, well, well if we can not meet the standards, sometimes we need to demand it from other firms. And if there are any imbalances in the forecasting period, uh, actually, it affects on the energy uh, consumption that we need to get from other firms. Uh, when we look at the uh, J and K factors, its effect is 3%. Uh, and when we look at the unlicensed ones, the effect is 2%. Uh, in this aspect, well, we have a Less margin. When we look at well, the licensed ones may be uh, better um, underestimated, it seems. But when we look at the effects, we have more risks. So daily, uh, our staff uh, should know the area very well, uh, like the uh, wind forecasting, weather forecasting uh, should be evaluated. And uh, probably the next uh, speakers will be talking about this in detail. 
Well, we uh, also have effects in Chanakkale regarding the network. When we look at the uh, rates of production, we have a rapid growth and a rapid decrease, uh, and it has negative effects on the network. Actually, you need to evaluate them uh, regarding the network. Well, that's all I can say for now. Well, in the second uh, part, we will move on. Well, thank you, Urjan. He evaluated uh, th this in regards of Chanakkale. Well, the third speaker uh, is Argen. Well, if you may, I will be talking about uh, this with my presentation. Well, I would like to welcome you all. Well, after uh, the lunch, I know it might be uh, boring, but I will be uh, giving uh, not much details. Well, I would like to introduce myself at first. I'm Argun Karachai. Well, for 12 years, I have been active in the energy sector. Right now, I am the managing partner in pure energy. Well, this is a new world, and this is a digitalized world, and it's the uh, first real uh, 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 plant in Turkey. And before that, I have been uh, active in a German of uh, Germany firm. Actually, I was active in the uh, renewable uh, energy plants. And then uh, I have been a managing partner in Pure Energy. But today, I would like to talk about the new world of energy. What happens in the new world in energy globally? What are the mega trends? What is this transformation process? Well, we have digitalization and IoT machines. In the last term, especially for the recent years, we have many different concepts. Well, for uh, a global perspective, uh, and I will be talking about the management of the digital plants. And I will be talking about the new trends, how uh, these new trends affect our daily life in terms of energy and in terms of wind energy, how it's realized. I will be talking about it during my presentation. Well, as I said before, I will be talking about the grand transition of the energy markets. And then I will be talking about the new trends and the outlooks. And then I have a case study. This is a pure energy uh, virtual power plant, how it's realized. Well, disruption. Well, this uh, is an important concept, this is an important word. In the recent years, we have been uh, uh, actually redefining it. It's, uh, it has a groundbreaking world in terms of the energy success. It is a key word. Well, actually, uh, it can be translated as a redefinement of something in Turkish. Well, uh, to give a more a classical example, like 10 years ago, Nokia was the market leader, including Turkey in uh, each uh, country of the world. It was the market leader. 
it was a ranking in the first place. But then we had smartphones. It was a groundbreaking process. We had iPhones and Samsungs, and now we don't actually hear anything about Nokia. It's trying to adapt itself in this uh, new process. So when we're talking about disruption, I think this is a, a very proper case, proper example. Well, we have a new trend, and energy sector is affected directly by this trend. Well, shortly, well, this trend has key factors, key reasons. Why do we need this transition? Well, on the basis, uh, actually, humanity uh, is the uh, first phase. We are trying to meet the needs of the people. We are trying to facilitate uh, the people's everyday lives. Because in the end, uh, we are uh, on this hall and we are active in the energy sector. We are interested in the energy sector. And in the end, uh, I think you are uh, very feasible uh, for that world. But uh, apart from that world, we uh, actually have a very uh, grand world outside this hall. Well, we have urbanization uh, uh, mega trend in 1950s, 30% uh, of the world population was living in urban areas. But now, when we look uh, at the rates, more than 50% of people live in uh, the cities. And in the uh, uh, later years, we will see that the uh, actually rate will be up to 70%. And actually, it's brings out a new paradigm for the need of energy. The need for energy is increased. And the, uh, on the side of the technology, the revolution is important. The digitalization, uh, for example, we can reach the information more rapidly. And when we look at the daily lives, uh, actually, it uh, actually uh, changes the position of energy in our daily lives. Well, we have some uh, non-determined elements. But before that, you uh, actually, uh, I think, aware that the um, power is also uh, changing. To give a short example, 15 years ago in China, uh, uh, when uh, we uh, look at its rate uh, of when we look at its rate of gross rates, uh, it was very different. Uh, and when we look uh, at the uh, Japan, there is a increased rate of wealth. Well, when we look uh, at the rates in Africa, for example, most of the people cannot reach uh, electricity. Well, we have uh, actually non-determined uh, elements. It's hard to have a common legislation globally. It will need uh, actually a very long time. And after the uh, discussions, what is the projections? But when we look at the World Energy Council projection in 2015, the renewable energy has a share of 24. And when we look at the rates of 2015, it will be up to 85%. It's expected to be up to 85%, because there's an increased need of energy, increased demand of energy. And when we look at the uh, renewable energy, uh, the renewable energy should uh, substitute the need of the energy globally. Well, we are all included in this transformation process, and it has severe effects. Uh, 
But when we look at the market design, it's changing, I think, very uh, abruptly. Well, when we look at the 1980s, we had the consumption, we had the transportation and generation. Well, well today we have an unbundled uh, market design today. Well, we have a central generation, but now slowly we have a storage distribution. Well, we have a trading site because the generated energy, well, to the reach uh, on the reach of the end user it actually changes uh, the process when we look uh, at the distribution part we are talking about the deconstruction well, we have some roof applications it's getting more common uh, and it will be more common uh, in a rapid uh, pace well, uh, I think uh, when we look uh, at the unbundling of the distribution uh, management, like networks, uh, not the uh, consumer, uh, I think we should see as clients. But uh, in the uh, in the uh, later years, we will have a very different uh, process. Well, storage will be more important. And it's the same for the trading and the distribution. They will be continued, but we will have smart networks and smart uh, measurements and uh, metering uh, applications. And this is another side of the transformation process. Well, energy will be included more in our daily lives. We, we might have a micro uh, networks. And when we look at the consumer size, it's just like a player. Well, it will be generated in Turkey. How it will be uh, generated? How will the balance be? In the, uh, in the consumer uh, pace, we will have, in the consumer's pace, we will have a very rapid changing process. In this grand uh, transmission, how does it affect of the uh, biggest uh, energy firms? Where do they stand uh, globally? Well, we have an actually important graphic. When we look at the um, important uh, energy, uh, important energy firms, they are actually uh, growing, uh, and they are actually divided from others. Uh, when we look at EU uh, energy firms, when we look at EU market, they are also negatively uh, divided from other companies. One of the biggest utility uh, of uh, uh, Europe actually uh, had a very uh, important uh, very important uh, damage in regards of its revenue. Well, it is important for us to stand uh, still uh, in this uh, transformation process. Well, we have a, a example in UK, a new stand, uh, new startups. When we look at the, their shares, they actually increased up to uh, 13 percent. And it shows that the biggest companies uh, are uh, converting into the new startups, small scale firms, and we will be witnessing this transformation process.
Well, we have a three trends of the great edge transformation. It will uh, change the uh, energy world globally. This is electrification, decentralization. Well, when we uh, say in Turkish, translate into Turkish, it's called Ademi Merkezi Chile. Well, it will be more uh, distributed. We have a microgrids. It's an important world. It's a different world. And digitalization. For the digitalization uh, and electrification, uh, it will be make it possible with the new technologies, new smart uh, grids, smart appliances. We will have a remote controls, and we will be uh, actually moving into a new world. And in the next period, I think it will uh, be a renewable. Now, we are talking about the next period, but how close is it? Well, to understand it better, this is a very good comparison. Well, these are the basic technologies. And in time, how they are integrated into our daily lives. Well, let me look at the 90s. Well, we have electricity, but to integrate it into our lives, it actually took 30 or 40 years, but it's for the USA. And then we have radio, fridge, and then we have washing machines, we have dishwashers. And then we look at the 1990s and the end of the 80s, we have globalization. And then the information technologies were more uh, rapidly growing. And then the PCs were integrated in, uh, into our lives. And we can see from this graph that the integration period was shorter in the later periods. Well, the new uh, transformation, we are talking about electrification and decentralization. Well, how uh, quick uh, this integration will be, and I can say that it will be very quick, because in this graph, we have a very uh, precise, uh, clear um, uh, graphic here, because our uh, information society uh, is uh, very integrated, and we can adapt into this uh, changing process uh, more uh, rapidly and more easily. Well, for 15 years ago, if you are living in a foreign country, uh, actually it was very difficult to call uh, someone uh, in Turkey, but today it's very easier. It uh, does not cost anything at all, especially from the uh, internet. It's very easier. Well, you can see that in the last 10 years, our lives have changed very dramatically. Well, last week, uh, when I was on my way to Ankara, I have seen an electricity bus. It's from a Turkish uh, firm. And when I see that it's a 100% uh, electricity bus, actually, I was very proud. And uh, I think that the transformation process here that we are talking about is not very uh, remote. Uh, I think it's it will be very quick. Well, I would like to give another example. In China, in uh, every 15 days, uh, we uh, have lots of electricity bus equal to the uh, buses in London. And then you go to the Amsterdam, for example, in the uh, airport, you can see that taxis are Tesla. Well, I think, uh, as I mentioned before, the future is very near. 
in uh, 10 years, in five years, we will have a very rapid transformation process. Well, could you please wrap up? Well, I'm uh, wrapping it up. Well, in Germany, how does it happen? Well, this is a, a wind and solar power uh, until uh, 2010. When we look at the uh, graph in the last five years, the rate was increased by uh, two times. Not just uh, wind and solar, but we have a very uh, wide range of renewable energy sources. Well, this is another uh, source. You can see the cost of electricity. But when we look at the solar uh, plants, you can see that uh, well, in the uh, recent years, we have very important rates. With, uh, we have a utility scale renewable power generation uh, technologies. Well, for example, in uh, 2016, uh, actually, the cost was much uh, higher. Well, uh, I have a case study. Well, the realization uh, of the virtual power plants uh, for various plants, they are united in uh, one uh, plant and they are managed uh, by one uh, plant. Well, you know, we are in a building uh, managed by Sheraton, but uh, as in this case, we have a, a, a firm, operator firm related to the virtual power plant. But to realize it, it needs to uh, be uh, improved regards of uh, technology. We have machine learning models, big data, algorithmic trading, behavioral economics. We have partnerships, but the ultimate goal is the search for the optimum. Well, it's called pure energy in brief. In our uh, company, pure energy, we have energy training, we have VPP management, and we have advisory. We have wholesale power tradings. And in the advisory part, we are not an uh, advisory uh, firm, but for uh, the operational uh, experiences, uh, I think we are based on our operational experiences. Uh, actually, we started with a report of five years uh, of the roadmap of this uh, uh, energy market. Now we are actually started to the uh, uh, doing the uh, counselings to the Azerbaijan and other countries and for their access to the market in Turkey. It's all based on the experience. Well, it's interesting. Uh, we are uh, actually focused on the digital uh, plant management. Well, how it's realized? Well, I would like to give example of a wind power plant. Well, you have a, a real-time live connection to that wind power plant. In 15 minutes, we have forecasts. And then we, all, uh, we are actually feeding it uh, in 15, in every 15 minutes and trying to make the, our forecastings more clear. And actually we all have the, we all uh, have the operational burden. And then in the intraday market, we have operations uh, by uh, a week. And then in our plants, we are doing the management of our uh, plants. We have algorithmic tradings. We use algorithmic tradings because it's very challenging to do a seven, uh, seven days and four, uh, seven days and 24 hours operations. We need to be better. We need to improve ourselves all the time. But when we are talking about virtual power plants, we have 
um, actually five parts. Uh, IT is important, technology is important, market design uh, is important, and we need a, a good uh, knowledge of know-how. And the trading know-how is essential too. We have five components here. When they are united, we have the virtual power plants, and we are doing the management. Well, to realize it, uh, at the end of the day, as the chairman said, we'll minimize the grid of the the imbalance of the grid. So, uh, in this way. Uh, a clear uh, data. For example, there might be imbalances between the Istanbul and one, but when we um, look at the technical burden of the firm, uh, we have a lot of burden uh, in terms of uh, technical imbalances, and it can cause damages throughout the Turkey. It has a high financial costs. But if you are uh, closing a plant, uh, actually it will cost very much, like four or five uh, million uh, dollars. And one of the most uh, smart solutions is for the each plant, we need to have a, a highest uh, rate of the uh, perfectionism, actually. We have concepts of strategic partnership. And if we are uh, doing a good know-how, and I think we might have a good synergy if we all uh, do our parts. Well, for the uh, work model, we analyzed the data of the plant, and we look at the base price. And then, uh, if it's above the price, then we get our shares uh, focused on this uh, performance. It's a win-win model. Well, with this way, I think uh, for uh, the value uh, added uh, part, I think we are very feasible. Well, thank you for your patience and thank you for your participation. Thank you. Of course, about digital transformation, and uh, that's an important topic. So, last speaker is Sanjan. I think you also have a presentation to deliver. No, I can speak from here. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Isan Janos Poyraz. Uh, actually, I'm quite new when compared uh, to my colleagues, the experts in here. Uh, in 2013, I started to work in the energy sector, started energy for business uh, development. But in corporate life, I cannot further go on. And after 19 months, I just became an academician, first in London and now in Istanbul at Koch University. I'm an academic mission as the a PhD researcher assistant, especially quantitative risk assessment, and also artificial intelligence and uh, works that we have. Uh, well, uh, from where Argun uh, finished, digitalization, once we said digitalization, of course, there's just one term, one concept that we all have, that's data. And, um, you know, we have so much data started to be produced in the energy market about the smart meters, especially started to be used a lot by the consumers in particular. And at the, um, the consumption side, the, the RT technologies, so 10,000 of data stored and processed. Uh, we now have this technology and the capability. And the topic of today's discussion, especially, is risk, and uh, risk management in uh, wind uh, power plants. So uh, I think what we actually should consider the most what we should be inspired the most uh, is actually the finance sector. And as you know it pretty well, Money is actually uh, is actually flowing so fastly, so risk management is actually one of the most important pillars of all. And as much as I can say, uh, among the Nobel Prizes of Economy, one is option pricing and the other portfolio management theory. And therefore, uh, Nobel Prize, uh, especially for risk management. Of course, algorithmic trade uh, that Argon already discussed about, and human error uh, must be minimized. 
minimize that we discussed about. So everything actually is bringing us to one single term, that's analytics. And uh, speaking as an entrepreneur, uh, Quantico, what we are trying to do is, is, as a startup is offering analytic solutions. And it's a slide from the finance industry again to get the inspiration from the finance. As you can see, Goldman Sachs and um, people who are working at the trading desk, almost all are now more dealing with this, so they are now working on more added value jobs, and it's mostly the computers and the algorithms that are doing the Wall Street jobs. You know, for many long years, um, thousands of people stuck in a room, 724, uh, trying to minimize the risks and now algorithms uh, started to be used of course the software algorithms whether uh, they can possibly do it or not uh, maybe you just have some safety security issues in hand but um, uh, I can assure you that as a researcher I mean I can assure you that especially the power of calculation and uh, thinking about the level that we have re reached I mean trust me there's been beyond the human capacity. I mean, uh, for example, as you all know, in milliseconds, computers can do it. Uh, therefore, this technology should evolve, and we should evolve together with them. And uh, for risk management in the wind power plants, I can speak about three risks. One being, um, as also the topic of the panel, about the production forecast, some shifts from there. Of course, price volatility. And the third is the liquidity risk in my opinion and over these three risks let's go through it and how analytically we approach to them and that's what I'll be discussing about because it's actually uh, the algorithmic trading what we actually mean by this I mean there's actually a deeper technology down there so uh, from the production forecast as I have stated at the beginning of the panel especially wind is actually wind generation is something that you can forecast on it. and uh, especially intraday uh, trade I mean 12 days 30, 12 to 36 hours forecast it doesn't matter what you use but 16 to 22 percent of a deviation that you could have and therefore intraday market especially so as to renew the production schedule plan uh, it's inevitable so intraday uh, forecast change is a must uh, of course it doesn't matter how we get close to actual production, it could be one hour or so, but there still will be an uh, error. I mean, um, we cannot have a uh, fortune telling approach here. So you first have to make it as perfect as possible. Uh, maybe higher resolution, for example, from the region down to turbine specific forecast. So we can have real time calculation uh, for the data and real time processing of data. As I told you, uh, tons of uh, meteorological data are received, and it's very important to process them in the pro appropriate methodology. Then you actually can have a forecast technology of high uh, resolution as possible. Uh, it's uh, real for today. Besides that, in general, the other point besides forecasts is the probability. I mean, it's also a big advantage, I would say. Why it is important, uh, I will mention that. The second risk, uh, that's the price volatility. Uh, speaking about the intraday trade, I guess when we had intraday market prices uh, for the buyers and the sellers, the other is the system marginal price and what the level would be. Here in general, for many long years, uh, the sector is using the fundamental model, like, I mean, supply and demand simulated. In particular, once we require closer forecasts short term,
then statistical approach like machine learning or some artificial neural networks. And these are closed box approaches, but still they're much more um, successful. There are several reasons, but there's no point in getting into details. Maybe during Q&A we can say that. The third risk is liquidity. I mean, uh, whether you can find a buyer and the seller all the time or not, do you actually have a position and you actually have a price level in mind and you just wanted to make a sale and, uh, or purchase at a certain level but you cannot find the appropriate seller or buyer or you can find no one at all. Considering all these risks, uh, to the extent possible, production planning must be as real time as possible and as actual as possible so you have to be able to manage them all in one basket. Uh, how we can do this? First of all, let's assume these risks are uncertainties. I mean, you cannot forecast that how much you will generate. There will be a deviation. You are 100% sure about this. And also, you cannot forecast about the prices in other uncertainty and the liquidity, whether there will be buyers, sellers, or not. Now, the starting point is quite obvious. With regards to these uncertainties, so you have to take a step. You have to make forecasts. So, for generation forecasts, price forecasts, they all actually will give us an idea. And of course, to the extent possible, so is to be able to have a holistic approach, and so as not to avoid the marginal cases. One of the things that you should consider about is whether I should make spot forecasts or a wider range for this. According to our studies, the probabilistic forecasting uh, that what we're doing, it's much more uh, successful uh, because we actually should generate some future scenarios before we make a decision. And in making these scenarios from a spot forecast, if you, for example, make a scenario, you just will have one or two in hand. But of course, uh, we actually have to make a decision for the upcoming uh, one hour or two hours. And you should be able to include them into your calculations. So rather than a spot forecast, a point forecast, and maybe supporting it with the standard deviation or P90, P50, some other parameters using them would bring us a big advantage. After this part I'm not going to speak so technical from now on especially this at the point of risk management after we had the scenarios in hand what are these scenarios uh, for example the intraday if the prices will be this then the marginal system price would be that so I will have that much generation uh, so for example I can actually get for example we are doing arbitrage trading uh, that we can maximize our profit or avoid an extra cost. So uh, the uh, confidence interval at the same time should be kept at a certain level and maximize the revenue. Therefore, at this point, uh, in a basket of scenarios, we actually have to make some decisions. And in another slide, I mean, it's just quite a rough uh, table, I can say. So uh, more than one parameter, as you can see, used to, for a scenario. That's what the price will be, the production forecast, and that's actually a scenario tree or a decision tree. Of course, uh, think about it in a larger format. The decision maker, I mean, it could be the trader or the operator, or maybe the algorithm itself. So someone in this equation of uncertainty should make a decision and take action accordingly. As you would have appreciate the decision maker if it's, it's a human um, you will consider pluses and minuses of everything and um, it's not possible in a very short period of time
time to analyze all data and make a decision. And of course, it's something that should happen 724 round the clock so not possible uh, to use humans for this. So, as I told you, uh, inspired from the finance sector, as Argun stated, now that's actual analytical models, very strong analytical models used. For example, that's what we are doing with Excel. I mean, you know, sometimes people are telling us we use Excel sheets for this, but trust me, I mean, with Excel and macros, not possible for you to handle this such data. It actually requires coding. And um, with uh, powerful analytics, I mean, once you support these operations, and in terms of risk management, we can actually have great advantage. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ihsan John. In, thank you very much for the presentation on risk analysis. Now, that's the end of the first round. So let's get the last words, and then we have Q&A because we're getting to the end. Maybe for a couple of more minutes, if you have anything to say, then we can get the questions and end the session. Yes, let's start with Ura. Argun and Istanjan, that was great that we listened to them. Uh, why? Because especially very important for future solutions and how forecasting can better be handled. So uh, we actually received some good feedback from them. Now, what I'm trying to say is that, of course, all operators, all investors, all consumers, we should be embracing the future. Uh, but of course, we also have to consider the current conditions. What do I mean by this? As you all know, the R coefficient, as uh, John stated, for uh, it is was 2% until the end of 2017, but it is actually inadequate for the uh, wind power plants. So we actually, uh, both as the manufacturers and the association, uh, we, it's actually increased up to 3% by the Energy Market Board. Same uh, for the, the wind power plants again. As Fatih stated in his presentation, 40 percent, I mean, that's actually 40 percent of the cost is from the uh, wind power plants. In other words, I can say, as Isan John stated, uh, the more that you try to improve our forecasts, the better forecasts that we make, and uh, we actually have a short, a certain short cost left. So, uh, and it is covered by the wind power plant. So I think what we should do in here is, of course, we actually have to follow the new trends and the new business models as the generation companies, we should do it. But we also have to follow properly the regulation. And if there is any change in the regulation, we have to understand its impact on the WPPs. And and we also have to advise the energy market uh, board about this. Otherwise, especially in spot sales, we can come across with some risks. Another point I would like to underline, as the producers, we also end up with such uncertainties. Of course, we have to improve our forecast. And for the intraday market, the better that we improve our forecast, more active we will be and we'll get more liquidity. We will earn and we also will provide an advantage for the system. Thirdly, from the legislative perspective, we actually have to make sure that there's participation for the groups for balancing. I mean, of course, financial maybe issues are uh, handled, maybe not physically yet, but 
the costs there are meant by actually joining the group responsible for balance. We actually can minimize the costs there. The fourth one, as I told you, we at all times should strictly follow the regulation. It's not only about our own regulation, but any change in regulation. For example, how um, a WPP uh, again producer will actually be affected from this. Lastly, also in different, for example, sales channels. For example, we can make dual agreements, and that's what we should do. And uh, especially for world power plants, wind power plants, and so in Europe, for example, um, it's mostly uh, the consumers, for example, and the supply of electricity. It's the 100 companies uh, that will get this uh, because there's a roadmap that they will uh, have the supply. Once we are out of Yektem soon, just like in Europe, again we will have 10, 15 years of PPL agreements and probably we will have without any spot price risk we actually will offer them to the consumers due to bilateral through bilateral agreements so the future is in the wind power plants thank you question to Urai and the hot topic in 2018 as you all know as i told you in 2018 we actually have an increasing ppt so i'm wondering whether it is the same i mean did you have any bilateral uh, agreements no we did not have it in our company but i mean we don't have too much um, bilateral agreements but I mean, our price forecasts are high, so for 2018-2019, no bilateral agreement, so we're not ending up in such. Urai mentioned about the regulation and legislation. Uh, you know, uh, in terms of the regulation, there will be a new regulation to come, especially for licensed uh, power plants, there will be monthly set off. And uh, for unlicensed producers, this is something that they all wanted. Why? Because in unlicensed production, at the point of set off, it's something applicable and valid for that hour. I mean, your consumption set off to uh, your generation. Um, some of the major producers, those who are consuming at the same time, uh, as they fail to do simultaneous production and consumption, they incur a loss. And through monthly set off, probably in the upcoming period, unlicensed production will be more, in my opinion. And even maybe for battery storage, I guess it will become much more integrated. So there will be no uh, imbalance at all. And it will be directly integrated to trade. So we'll have quite a sound and balanced production in the future. I think in the new era, we, we actually should have smarter transmission networks. Why? Uh, transmission grids. Because uh, the consumer is at the same time doing uh, generation, so become a market player. So from this perspective, I guess the transmission grids must be serving both to the, uh, again, the, um, for both. And therefore, they actually will turn into smarter ones. And uh, of course, we need more analysis and smarter systems that uh, we will need. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished chair. I have a couple of sentences just to sum up. First of all, um, for 
supply safety uh, in Turkey, supply security, we should be able to manage imbalances properly. And uh, we actually have to do it individually on the basis of each and every single power plant. Um, therefore, the existing TCG structure, I would say, is actually something temporary. And of course, we have ongoing regulatory works, and uh, it has matured a lot. Uh, so probably it will not survive for so long. And uh, physically, each and every uh, investor um, should say that my actual power plant is has excellence in operation for each and every power plant, and it must be an active way of uh, managing, not a passive one. And uh, of course, that's what we also mean by digital Digitalization mainly. What do we mean by this? 16, 20 percent, for example, if uh, there is any, uh, for example, deviation, uh, for example, one day before, then in intraday market, reduced down to 5 percent for the date of an hour ago. And uh, this actually, uh, we are doing the uh, intraday trades uh, 724, so uh, as of last month, as terms of the market share, pure energy is uh, uh, ranking the first. So. Uh, uh, that's actually all about the in-flash form of what we mean by this. It must be performed. I mean, uh, the power plants should be actively managed, and we should have a certain level of excellence. Uh, you know, Uri has also mentioned about corporate BPA and uh, especially renewable energy consumer role of major producers, as you mentioned, is important. Maybe just one thing that we are doing, I will focus on as pure energy uh, for an unlicensed for an unlicensed solar power plant that we have there's a renewable energy credit uh, with a 10-year contract and sell it to a, a major uh, technology company and directly with the California headquarters that we signed the contract so it's actually a brand new world now we have today not tomorrow so especially in terms of uh, the um, wind power plants, I totally agree with that. That's actually a sound, uh, again, uh, example for this. So, I mean, it's very important to actively manage the imbalances and, uh, of course, to the extent possible, it's now the time to assume responsibility for our power plants, and I believe that it actually would be more in our daily lives. So, thank you. Any additional comment? Well, uh, from our own perspective, we're doing something analytical, and data is actually the most valuable thing to us. Uh, so to make data as transparent as possible and uh, to make them real time or close to real time, Especially, they actually have to be published as real time as possible. We actually have a couple of arguments and also can be a demand from the regulators. With the recent correction for, you know, one hour for uh, intraday trading, reducing it to one hour uh, less is uh, good, but maybe it could be reduced down to 15 minutes and, uh, for the accuracy of this. And, of course, for balancing costs as well, because it's a huge burden, I can say. Uh, so it could be good to do so. And transparency, the uh, transparency platform is an important source to us, and we make use of this. And that's also appreciated a lot. But uh, about the interval for the announcement of the data can be increased more, especially it's good for uh, analytical people like us, so as to have more successful modeling. For example, rather than once in an hour, it could be once in every 15 minutes. Uh, so we actually can compile them and update them with the data from the power plants, and we can combine them from with the market side and can get better, can take better decisions. And about uh, there are some delays in publishing some of the data, for example, for five hours later, uh, data published. So it's very important to make them uh, closer. Lastly, just as an argument on the table, 
Switzerland, uh, this is the case. Maybe also the case in the other countries, but I don't know. But all the data of all the VPP data is shared instantaneously, uh, which actually contributes a lot to the uh, sector. Thank you. So just a couple of words, then the Q&A. Uray and I worked a lot on certificates. In 2013, there's a green certificate in the electricity market regulation, uh, but actually not much done about this. We're, we need this. I mean, if we have the certificate system in Turkey, I guess we work on this, which is important. Um, once the actually regulation is uh, published, then we actually can assume responsibility. Isan John stated about the 15 minutes of trade, and uh, yes, uh, I mean we are we are ready for 15 minutes of trading. I mean, uh, I mean if we get a positive approval from the, again, uh, Turkish Electricity Corporation. Of course, as the energy market, I mean, Epiash can also do the same thing. I mean, once in every 15 minutes, it's possible. I don't know, maybe there could be an update requirement for half an hour, uh, but the system of Tayash, I guess, can be improved from this perspective. Yes, why not? We can have 15 minutes of interval. Of course, transparency is a huge topic. We actually had the fourth workshop on transparency. For those who cannot come, we webcast it. The data in the transparency platform all announced with the decision of a council. I mean, as a result of the meeting for the entire year, the council decisions are revised and published in the transparency platform. And based on the decision of the council, a PH at the transparency platform is publishing them. Of course, once we have the council decision, then a PRK can easily be uh, announced at a PRK. So thank you. Any question? Actually, we don't have much time. Maybe just one or two questions only, if any. Hello. Özgür Çebi, I actually have a question to Argon, maybe irrelevant, uh, but now the more that we have the smart systems, there is actually a weakness in terms of security and safety. There is actually a new topic, that's the use of blockchain and energy that's worldwide popular. Uh, by using blockchain and energy, is it possible to ensure for security or making sales over the block blockchain? There are people who are working on this as much as I know. What are your comments about this? Thank you for the question, as you mentioned. As you mentioned, uh, we actually have more and more data in hand, and it's, uh, quite an intense data that we have. So safety is very important, and uh, procedural safety is so important. Blockchain is a platform. Uh, blockchain is actually sometimes confused to Bitcoin, but these are two, two, two different things. Blockchain is a platform, and in this platform, hundreds or thousands and millions uh, of different parties actually verify transaction of each other. So uh, no need for an authority. It's a more direct way of making procedures. So in the upcoming period, microgrids and scattered again generation and so uh, will be more in our lives. So yes, applications like blockchain, I believe, would make individuals a market player and will allow them to do transactions with each other. In the upcoming period, yes, we'll hear more about that, I guess. It's going to be a key word we'll hear a lot. Thank you. I guess no further question. Thank you for your attention.